Hi everyone! Thank you so much for hopping on live for another Soul Care Life class. I'm grateful that you're here and I'm really excited to announce our guest today, Cook. And I will, yes, I see you there. I will invite you one second. I'm going to send you an invitation here. Yes, great. Hey, everyone. Thanks so much. Well, Tom Cook is coming on. I would love to let you know that I'm grateful for you all being here, joining us today live. Hi, Tom. Hey, Thanks. fantastic, Felina. Good to see you. Great to see you, too. I'm so happy that you made some time in your, your busy schedule to be with us and share some of your knowledge and have this easygoing and relaxed conversation with me as hopefully it will flow. Um, thanks so much. I would love to um, give you a bit of a, of a warm welcome and introduction in a second. Um, and I'd love to let everybody that hops on here live today here on Instagram, but also that listens to this uh, in the podcast. I just want to let you know that I'm so grateful everyone of you being here um, listening or watching. Um, I'm grateful that you take your time out of your busy schedules too and that you're, uh, that you're sharing your energy here with us. I, um, I'd love to let you know that if you're joining us live, um, you're so welcome to ask any of your questions and type them here in the chat box below. Um, or, you know, you can always find us on our social medias or uh, send us emails and we'll We'll put some information in the show notes or in the, the notes below this, um, these uh, lives as well, w once you look them back some other day. Um, I'm just really grateful to, to start off with this new beautiful topic today, how to start and grow a heart-centered business. And this is something that I love uh, and I'm just grateful to connect with you, Tom, here uh, and, and get to know your view on this. Um, yeah. And I, yeah. I just, I just want to say a massive, a massive thank you for having me when, you know, when you reached out to me and just asked, you know, I, that really means a lot to me. Um, mm -hmm. and so I, I really just appreciate coming here to spend the time with you and just, you know, talk about personal development, talk about business, talk about growth, because, you know, I know it's something that we both have very much have in common. Um, and I know we'll have a lot to talk about. So uh, yeah, I just appreciate you reaching out and everybody else that is joining in on this as well. So thank you. Thanks so much for saying that. I love that. And um, yeah, I do really feel we have so much in common on that set in that sense. I, I love that to connect even more. And um, you're really grateful that you said yes and that you jumped on on this uh, call with us. And um, I might have already said this, but just to re to repeat it one more time, everybody that hops on now or checks checks in later, um, you can send any questions. No question is is weird. You know, every question is is welcome, and uh, or just send some comments, things that you'd like to share with us. You're super welcome to do so. So I just wanted to point that out. I might do a, a little check in somewhere in the middle of our talk uh, with people and welcoming them. For now, I just want to welcome Ellen and Dimphy and uh, Alian. I, I see uh, Matej, I see Alas, I see Jesus, I see Mandana, uh, Char, Gonzalez. Thank you so much, everyone that hopped on already for being here. And um, yeah, let's, let's just dive into this today. Thank you so much. Now, how to start and grow a heart-centered business, how to do that. Um, I'd love to kind of, you know, go on this journey and, and let you know who today's guest is. And um, I just, I'm just i just going to share some things from the heart and put in a bit of the things that you shared with us already. Um, and if I leave out anything that I might have missed, I'll just give you some space afterwards, okay, to, to maybe add anything. Uh, I just, what I feel um, where I connect with you in that sense is that you're such a wise, warm being and you're always so 
yeah, I, I think your level of being of service to people is, is really, really something special. Um, I, it's probably why you do what you do. <laughs> but um, I think, yeah, it's not many people have that gift. And I'm just really grateful that you share it with the world and dare to stand up as, a, as the leader that you are doing. Um, I love to connect with you on that sense too. And I, um, what I want to let people know here is that Tom is really a, a, a like, I, I already see you as a world-class speaker. I think you're an amazing trainer. You, you, you now have been part of a team, an international team that has coached and trained thousands of business owners already around the world and helping them, um, you know, grow from 20 to 200 percent in months. And I think that's a big, big thing that you're doing already. But I feel that there's so much more that you still can give and do outside of that as well. Um, you're such a skilled trainer and, and teacher already now that you've, you've just started this journey, right? And you're already on this level. And I think that's just mind blowing. And um, yeah, you, you've been working with this largest seminar um, organization in the world, sharing the stage with many uh, well-known speakers. And uh, yeah, it's just really an honor to have you here. <laughs> yeah, thank thanks. You. And Felina, you know, that, that really does mean a lot. Um, you know, when I, I hear those things, it's, it's, it's humbling. It's a blessing that, that you'd say that as well. Um, and I, I, I love what I do. I really do. And it's, I think, we, you know, that we're talking about this uh, topic today and building a heart-centered business um, because I feel like I'm on mission. I feel like I'm on purpose. And you share those things. I think, well, I, I'm just doing what I'm supposed to be doing in life. Um, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. Yeah, you're, you're so welcome. Thank you for doing that, for being, uh, for stepping up and daring to live that mission and purpose. Um, I can kind of speak a bit from experience that that is not always the easiest road to walk to live your mission and, and being of service on that kind of level. So, and I, there's probably a lot more <laughs> to learn. So I, I love to learn from you as well um, and with you in that sense. But maybe to start today, is there anything that you'd like to start off with or, or that you'd like to add on? Maybe I've not covered everything that you do. I, I think uh, what's on my mind is I just share, I just share where I came from because I wasn't I wasn't always doing this, um, and I think I could probably resonate with a lot of people where uh, it was I, I was working in I was working in construction I was working in a corporate job, and I I'd, I'd been to I'd been to university I'd done civil engineering got the job and I thought brilliant that's it I'm set for life I've got that dream job you know go to school, get good grades, go to university or college. And I've done it. I've done it. And I, I thought I was set for life. I ended up going traveling. Uh, yeah. I went traveling for six months, uh, went on my own. And it was, the, it was the craziest thing that I'd ever done in my life. And I just total freedom, experienced total freedom, no stress. And I came back to, I came back to my job. I went back to the construction job, same company. And I just, it just dawned on me, I was reading through my new contract that I had, and it just dawned on me, I was like, oh, is that as exciting as my life was going to get? And now is it going to be a case of the next 20, 30, 40 years, however long, I was going to be working for somebody else. Mm -hmm. I was gonna be contributing to somebody else's dream, um, helping them reach their goals, helping them make a lot of money. And that didn't sit right with me. And I felt trapped. I felt massively restricted. I felt massively stuck. And I, I was looking for answers. And I know there are probably a lot of people watching this who have felt trapped in their life. They felt restricted. And they know that they've got something else in them. There's something more that they can do in life. Um, and I really hope that I can just be... I, I hope that I can inspire people and say, do you know what? You, if, you, if there's something that you want to do, you can do it. You can do. I'm, you know, I'm no entrepreneurial background. You know, nobody in my family is an entrepreneur or anything like that. Um, but in the space of in the space of twelve months, I found out that you know 
coaching and training was for me is the road I wanted to go down. It was fulfilling. Um, it had flexibility. It was going to allow me to be independent. Um, and 12 months later, I quit my job. And, you know, that's what I'm doing today. I'm inspiring people to go on that same journey because life outside of the nine to five is so much better. Yes, it's more challenging. Yes, there's less security, uh, but it is so much better. Um, and it's so much more rewarding as well, especially when you're doing something that you care about, something you're passionate about, something that you have heart about as well. Um, so that, that's why I'm here. And I, I, I hope people can resonate and connect with that because I know so many people feel trapped. So many people feel stuck right now. Yeah. Yes. Thank you for starting off with that. Like you, you, you really started off on the right spot when it comes to daring to leave our, our nine to fives. Um, it, that is kind of the process, right? It is really a big step to make that choice and daring to do that. And, and now for, for you now, after these years doing that, even not, having the example in your family of being an entrepreneur, maybe even it can then be, it can be such a, well, almost scary journey to, to do that, to really figure out your own ways in that. And um, it, it takes such courage to, to dare to live that. And, you know, what comes on into mind now is like the French word courage. Courage is like the heart, right? Yeah. And, um, so it, it is literally a heart-centered business and living a heart-centered life and living your purpose from your, your heart or your soul in that sense. Um, yeah, it takes a lot of courage. And, and that, right, that's why when I hear somebody, they've just started a business, they're thinking about quitting their job, you know, I, I'm, I'm so happy for them because it does take that courage. You know, you think if you're in a job, if you're working a nine to five or, you know, any job, you're at the end of the week or at the end of the month, you're expecting um, a payment and you expect that payment to be in your bank account n no matter what. And you, you obviously get into that mindset that there's always going to be a secure payment ready for you. And the thing with just going in on your own and with your own business, um, mm -hmm. you're almost cutting away that security. And that's why it is so scary. You know, I was very blessed. I was in a position where I didn't, I didn't have kids, I didn't have a wife, I didn't have a mortgage or anything like that. Um, so I count, I count myself as very lucky, very blessed that, you know, I was able to take that risk and leave my job um, because the risk to me wasn't as big. However, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm here to say that you don't have to quit your job. You don't have to just cut it off altogether. You can build a business on the side of what you're currently doing. Now, when, you're, when your income gets to a good point, then you can make that switch if you choose to. Um, but you don't, you don't have to cut off your security and your income straight away. Thank you for pointing that out. I, that is so true. I know that for me, it was a similar journey being blessed in that sense, having, um, well, it, it is a blessing just, just to pop that in. Like it, it was losing my health being a risk, higher risk than to understand that, uh, a fixed job contract didn't mean as much to me if my health wasn't as so secure to to fall back on right so it kind of made sense to then well let's just give it all up then <laughs> um but that was it, it it sounds like a fun thing to say now and i laugh and i smile but it was the hardest decision i ever made um just to kind of add on to what you were saying you don't have to quit it as rapidly as I did in my journey, for example, or as you might have been able on your path, it is different for everyone, of course. Yeah, that's so true. Yeah. And, it, and it's just remembering as well is that the, the thought that came into my mind is the, the salary or the payment that you get is essentially a payment for you to give up on your dreams. You think about it, it's like, right, we, this is, we're going to pay you this amount of money. Um, it's going to be the bare minimum of what we can pay you. Um, but in exchange, we want you to give up on your dreams, on what you want in life, and to come and help us and work for us. But in return, we'll give you the security. We'll make sure there's money in your bank account every month so you can buy food, um, have a, a roof over your head so you can pay your bills. We'll sort all that, but we just want you to give up on your dreams. And, that's, and, and we've lost ourselves in that mindset of, oh, my God, I'm, I'd rather have the salary. I'd rather have the payment. And I'm okay with up on my dreams. 
Um, and there's, you know, particularly with everything that's happened in the last uh, two years now with the pandemic, people are waking up to the fact that, do you know what? I don't want to put my life in somebody else's hands. I want to do what I want to do in the world. Mm. Yes. Uh, in the meanwhile, thank you so much, everybody, for, for your comments. Uh, Matej says, uh, I'm loving this conversation and totally resonate with all of that. Tom Cook is a brilliant trainer. Yes, good. you are. Good to see you, my friend. Thank you for being here, buddy. Thank you so much. And um, yeah, I love, I love how, you, um, how you point out, you know, everybody can, well, I think many of us can resonate with that. And I'm, you know, it's a bit, it can be a double thing to say because it, it is a hard, it has been some really rough years it have you know it, it it was not easy for many of us and with what is going on in the world even today um it 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 doesn't really seem to be going much easier yet so uh it can be such a it can be so scary you know to to break out of these thought patterns or that programming that we've all learned from our um Yes, yeah, so surrounding society, maybe even family members, generations. Um, and now this is kind of the age for people to, or the year maybe these, these ages for, for people to really wake up in. And I'm grateful for you, Tom, and many of us people here today listening or watching that you are such a leader too and dare to step up and dare to be awake and dare to take on people on the journey to to be even more awake I'm, I'm just really grateful that you do that um i think yeah i think that's that's a, not even only a, like a humbling experience i think the world needs that right now what, what is your take on that 100 <clears throat> percent, and it's there is there is so much going on in the world you know it, it's very sad what is happening out there um and i'll, I'll always say this that there will always be something. There will always be um, a crisis of some kind. It might be on a global scale. It might be on a personal level. You know, somebody you know who isn't very well or your own health, you know, there's always going to be something happening. Um, there's always going to be something happening in the economy. There's always going to be hap something happening in the, um, in the world. When I, when I was thinking about quitting my job, um, what was happening in that current time um, was Brexit. And I remember speaking to my mum, I was like, oh, do you know what, I'm actually thinking, I've, I've kind of fallen out of my love with my job, I'm actually thinking I'm gonna leave. I remember she was like, Tom, well, just wait, wait till October, let's see what happens with Brexit. Um, you know, I went, I went on to quit my job. Three months later, the pandemic kicks in. Um, and now we've got, you know, what's, what's happening in Ukraine. And it will always, the pattern through history shows there will always be a crisis. There will always be something going on. Now, you can wait on the sideline and you can try to, oh, is it, is it okay? Is it safe? Can I step into the game? Can I do, can I go after my goals yet? Oh, no, I'll wait a little bit longer. Or oh, I'll hold back another year. I'll give it another year. And what will inevitably happen is you will be waiting your whole life. You'll be waiting your whole life for the right opportunity to jump in. And the truth is, there is no right opportunity. There is no perfect opportunity. There's, there's no perfect time. You know, it's going to be, the situation is never going to be quite right. Um, but the sooner you get started, the better. And I always love that. I love that quote. You know, the best time to plant, I think it was a Chinese proverb that says the best time to plant a tree 20 years ago. The second best <laughs> time to plant a tree is right now. So yes. what's coming to my mind is like for everybody listening, look, you can... You can wait another year if you want, um, but in a year's time, you know, you might find yourself in a worse position and you'll still be thinking to yourself, I want more fulfillment, I want more money, I want to have more freedom, or you can start today. You can start today and just really try and figure things out um, and imagine where you'd be in 12 months. And, you know, I, like I said, I want to inspire people because in 12 months I quit my job um, and I went forward with what, I, what it was that I wanted to do. Yes, thank you so much for sharing this and for, for pointing out this really important thing. Um, there is no, it, it is never the right time. There, it is never the right moment. Things will happen. 
always around you on a global scale, on a personal scale. I, I'm grateful for you pointing that out because this is something that we probably all know, everybody watching, listening, or, you know, us. Um, I think I can resonate with that, like having waited. It, it goes from, you know, building a business and, and choosing your path in the entrepreneurial entrepreneurial journey but for me for example it, it was also on um really on a personal scale when it came to um maybe friendships that weren't working at a certain time in life or maybe um you know really difficult situations that you kind of grew out of or maybe have to move on from in order to save yourself to save myself in my case or to make sure that you know you create a, a healthier surrounding for yourself and in this is this goes for business this goes for personal things this goes for relationships on uh, on a romantic scale like um it goes on all those areas that you sometimes just really have to make a choice even though people around you will not agree with you or have different visions for you um it really, it always comes back to that point that it's, it's, you know, it always, or the same as never, it is never the right time or never the right opportunity. The same goes for, it actually is always then the right time or the right opportunity. Yeah. Sorry, just, I was going to say, because people, people can, people can give advice to you. Um, you can be surrounded by those people and they can give advice to you. And sometimes they can give you very good advice. Um, but at the end of the day, it's, it's only you who knows what you really want. Um, and I don't think that people can show a lot of empathy, but I don't think people will ever a hundred percent be able to fully understand what you want. They may get close 98, 90, uh, 99%, but I don't think, uh, I don't think it'll ever be a hundred percent. And I think that's why you, you do have to take, um, you got to take that responsibility. You've got to be at cause over your life. And like you were saying, you, you've got to make that decision for yourself mm -hmm. and you got to actually just sit there and go, what do I really want? Not what everyone else wants for me. Everyone, everyone does want the best for you, but sometimes they project their own things onto you. You got to sit there and think, what do I want for myself? Um, mm -hmm. out the influence of other people. Um, yeah. it's when you can decide and you can follow through on that, that's when you're going to feel happiest. That's when you're going to feel most fulfilled because you know you're doing something that you want to do. Yes, I love that. Thank you for, for making the circle around on that one. It's beautiful. Um, would it be okay if I just ask you a bit on your, uh, you know, to, I'll just repeat today's topic just for everybody that hopped, hopped on later maybe. Today's topic is um, how to start and grow a heart-centered business. And I just love to ask you, Tom, uh, you've shared already like your journey a bit and, and what it means to you. Um, but, you know, where did your your drive or, or you know, that fire inside, where, where did where did that start in your own journey to to now, you know, being a speaker on so many topics, but also on this one? <laughs> it's actually quite funny because um, for for one reason, I should really hate personal development. My first, my first introduction to personal development, I did not enjoy. And this was this was many many years ago when I was um, when I was a lot younger, and and somebody who I really cared about um, wanted me to start doing goal setting, and I just I wasn't interested um, mm -hmm. in anything to me, and I just I was so turned off by it. Um, yeah. Then it was then when I actually started working in construction, um, they put us through like a graduate program and they uh, taught us about communication and, and uh, yeah, it was about communication, how to build that trust with people with rapport. Um, and going through, going through those courses, going through those programs, it was like, I don't know, I just, I felt a real connection to um, this whole thing around mindset and communication. And I started reading books. In fact, the first, one of the first books I read was um, how to win friends and influence people. Um, and I started listening to um, interviews with successful people, podcasts. Um, even whilst I was traveling, I was reading, I was reading a Tony Robbins book whilst I was traveling. Um, mm. And it was, it was interesting because I was, I was reading, listening to all these interviews, reading these books, and they're saying, if you want to, 
Um, if you want to create value for yourself, if you want to create a life of freedom and success, you need to be able to add value to other people. Now, at the time, I think I was maybe, when I started reading those books and listening to those interviews, I was maybe, I think it was maybe 23, 24, something like that. And I'm going, well, how can I help anyone? I'm a quantity surveyor working in construction, and I'm 23, 24. How the hell do I help anyone? Mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't until after I came back from traveling, I started going deeper into it. I started going to courses and seminars. I went to one course, which was about, uh, it was about speaking. It was about training. And I remember we did our final presentations at the, at the end of like the fourth or fifth day. It, it's really hard to describe to people, but it was, I know it sounds cliche, but it was like a lightning bolt moment of clarity. I remember being in that audience going, oh my God, this is it. This is actually what I'm supposed to be doing in my life. And I connected the dots because it was, suddenly I could create something that was gonna enable me to create success, money, fulfillment, but it was something that I was gonna be able to help a lot of people with a topic in an area that I was hugely passionate about, which was personal development. And it was that lightning bolt moment of clarity. Um, that's, that's the, that was the turning point for me because up until that point, I, I couldn't see what it was going to look like. Um, so that was, that was the turning point for me. Thank you for sharing that one. And um, I, I love how you, yeah, could you maybe elaborate a little bit on up until that turning point when you were not clear yet? Um, just, just uh, I, I, I feel that people here might, um, might resonate with that. I know I do that the moments that, that it's so difficult to, to really f know what the turning point then could be because you just can't see it yet or the, j to really feel uh, aligned with what you're supposed to be doing, it can be sometimes a bit of a, how do you say that? Like you can sometimes drown in that or you, know, you feel that you have a gift, but it can be such a difficult road up until that point that you figure it out finally. Um, so could you maybe share how, you know, how that went for you? There's always, so there's, there's a few things, there's a few things on my mind was, you know, I've learned, um, particularly over the last, um, three years having my own business, a few things that I've learned is if you want to, if you want to get the answers, then you need to be present. And what I mean by that, there's so much noise going on. We've got social media, we've got all these different things happening. Um, and mm. every mind is just bombarded with adverts and content and information and it can be overwhelming it can be so overwhelming and you if you want to find answers if you want to answer the internal questions that you're having you need to step away from that noise now that might be um you know that might be going away for the weekend going out walking or doing some exercise getting out in the fresh air just having some time on your own in the peace and quiet and asking yourself you know if you if, if you could have your dream life what would that look like and actually sitting down and going through what it is that you want to have. Um, and a, another thing that I wanted to mention, <laughs> something that served me very well is to head towards what I fear most. Now, what are most people doing? When you feel fear, what, what are most people doing? They're running in the opposite direction. But what I've learned is actually whatever you fear the most head towards that direction, head that way, because it's likely what you're looking for is on the other side of that fear. I, I see fear as a, um, like a magnet, pull it, pulling you towards something. And most people are running the opposite direction. I actually think you should run towards it. Um, and the answers that you're looking for are often on the other side of that fear. Um, and I get, it, it's funny, you know, I did, one of my biggest fears was, was speaking, uh, speaking to a group of people. I uh, was speaking in front of a group of um, people, uh, like that is for many people. Um, that's a huge struggle. Um, but from from what I'm doing now, it just I, w I would never have thought that years ago. Would never have thought that. I love that though. I can I can so relate to that. <laughs> I would have never thought standing in front of of groups of people, and I I can see um, this pro probably is why you're doing it right you you, you are so um, you're sensitive enough to be kind of humbled by the fact that you have uh, a, 
yeah, like a big responsibility when you're, when you're standing in front of people. And um, I think that, you know, that, that uh, asks for some, some great skills in that sense. Um, and yeah, I, I just, I resonate with you on, on the part of, I was, I used to be such a shy girl. I would not, speaking would be like not even speaking in front of people. I mean, speaking towards one person would sometimes be a difficult thing, right? So, you know, what looking at what you're just saying from that perspective um, shows to me that you've been through so many transformations then in order to do that. And um, when it comes to fears, um, I love how you, how you share that because uh, you call it like a magnet. And what I feel when it comes to fears, um, you know, fear was... Uh, when, when I take it more on a personal level, like fear was an emotion and is an emotion for many people that it can sometimes be kind of the taboo emotion, right? We have these, uh, all these emotions like um, happy, um, sad, angry, fearful, or maybe sometimes jealousy. That's also a, can be a bit of a taboo emotion and, and for, for many people, sadness and happiness and sometimes anger are a bit of like easier approachable or easier to connect with those emotions. Sometimes anger is a, a different story. It was for me. Um, but fear is one of those emotions that it is sometimes difficult to talk about it or to really allow yourself to feel into it. But once you do, like you call it a magnet, for me, it's like almost fear is kind of the compass. Um, you know, fear is is really close to our intuition, and sometimes when you feel fear, it's it's probably because something is trying to warn you there, right? Sometimes your fears are are good to be experienced. They're, they they have a they have a like a a purpose, um, as long as you dare to you know move to it and through it. Um, and sometimes it's good to listen to it and, and move away from things when you feel that fear, of course. Um, so that was a bit of a, a rant out of the topic, maybe. But I, I'm just, is, does that awaken anything in you? A hundred percent, because it's a fantastic point. Because I, I know m most of my life I've felt emotions and it's like, oh, no, emotions, don't want to feel that. Um, mm -hmm. it, really, through all the work that I've been doing over the last few years, have I really started to get much better at being in touch with my emotions. Before that, it was like, no go. Any kind of emotion or fear or sadness came up, no, weren't <laughs> interested. Um, it's only through the work over the last three years um, that I've actually really started to get. Now, I'm a work in progress. Absolutely. You know, I've got a distance to go on that. Um, you yeah. know, everyone's have but this is what this is what happens and we feel emotions and we go oh no don't no fear oh god mm -hmm. I'll, go, I'll go the other way don't want to experience that but your emotions are if you think about it emotions are just a signal they're it, whether you want to god universe super conscious whatever you want to call it whatever you want to call it your emotions are just a signal for something in your life something happening in your life so if you're feeling a lot of um if you're feeling a lot of frustration maybe you're feeling a lot of anguish um it's a signal that something in your life needs to change mm -hmm. if you're um if you're feeling a lot of fear it's a signal that something in your life needs to change likewise if you're feeling a lot of happiness a lot of gratitude it's a signal that you're doing something right in life and something's mm -hmm. going and i think we just the the thought and the kind of the um, ideas that were coming to my head is we need to stop seeing emotions and trying to shut them down. And it's very mm -hmm. much, th this is why mental health is, is such a big, uh, such a big issue because I, uh, you know, I was very much raised on, you know, boys don't cry, be strong, stiff up a lip, all of that. And mm -hmm. when we feel fear, we don't all know, oh, I don't, I don't want to be weak. I've got to be strong. It's okay. Mm -hmm. It's okay to feel fear. It's perfectly normal. The most successful people in the world feel fear on a daily basis. I, I feel fear. I feel self-doubt. I feel uncertainty. I get it all. Um, but what I, what I hope that I'm doing is that 
feeling those things, people can look at me and go, well, hang on, if Tom's uncertain, if Tom gets self-doubt, um, if he's not sure about things, if he still feels fear, but look, he's still making progress, that means I can still make progress. And I think everybody has, everybody's trying to have, everyone's trying to get rid of all the fear, all the uncertainty, all the self-doubt before they take action. But you can't <laughs> action whilst feeling those things. It's okay. So I, I just wanted to share that as well. Yes, I love that. Thank you so much for sharing that. And, and um, you know, what I also see in that, what you pointed out, um, the biggest, you know, it's kind of a misconception thinking that you're, you're not strong when you show emotions. But as, as far as I have experienced now in, in my short amount of time on this earth, um, what I feel after having served many of people and, you know, taking myself as, as the instrument, what I feel is that I feel strongest when I'm sharing my emotions in the end, when I dare to show them, when I uh, dare to be vulnerable, that's when I actually feel most empowered. And I, I do believe that it, that is for almost all of us. Of course, it is scary to show those emotions, but once you do, it shows so much more strength than when you, when you don't. And um, so that's kind of how, how, how I look at you sharing that. Um, I, I'm just grateful that you uh, dare to open up that way. You know, I think it's, it's strength when people do that. So it's, yeah, I love that. I love that you point that out. I did, I'll just share quickly because I did some, you know, vulnerability was a struggle for me and I did some work around vulnerability and actually understanding what is vulnerability, what, it, what does it mean? And the conclusion that I reached in learning for me is that if you actually look at the word vulnerability and the definition of vulnerability, it is somebody who is willing to open themselves up to um, attack or harm. Here's the thing. I just want everybody to think about this for a moment. If you're willing to open yourself up to um, attack or harm, are you, are you a weak person or are you a strong person? And the conclusion I reached in my mind, if you're somebody who's willing to open yourself up to attack and harm, you're somebody who's very, very strong. Here's, here's the thing that I also learned. Just because, you, uh, be, just because you open yourself up does not mean that you're gonna be attacked, does not mean you're gonna be harmed. And in fact, every time I've shown vulnerability, it's created more, um, it's created more connection, it's created more positivity, um, and more like that closeness, that oneness. You know, when you, when you can show vulnerability to an audience, suddenly everybody in the room feels connected. Exactly. Every, everybody in the room feels connected. Um, so I, I just wanted to share that as well. Thank you. I love that definition. I never looked at it from that perspective. So I, it, it really makes sense. I love that. Thank you. Um, yes, I, I just feel like um, I love the way the conversation is going. I just feel like maybe doing a little bit of a checkup. We've, we've had some comments and I believe that question has been answered as well. Thank you, Matej, for uh, being here and giving your compliments. And uh, he says, I'm sorry, I need to leave. Um, uh, in the <laughs> Sorry. What did you want to say? Oh, it's just Matty. He's a fantastic, if you know him, he's a, he's a brilliant person. Ah, great. Oh, I pronounced his name probably not the way I should have. Um, and Jamal, uh, Maria came on. Thank you for that. I see Mir. I see um, so many people. I see also some other um, messages. I see Michelle. I see... Foxy, who are your hearts? Thank you so much for being here. That means hear your heart in, uh, in Dutch. Um, so that's beautiful. I see Ashley, Ben. Well, thank you everybody for being here and, and for your comments. If you feel like asking us any questions uh, for this last bit that we're live, uh, feel free to type them in into the chat. And uh, today's topic is how to grow and uh, start and grow your uh, heart-centered business. And well, thank you so much, Tom, for sharing and covering so many things on your journey already. Um, is there anything that you feel um, would be helpful for everybody listening now in, in the sense of, um, yeah, when it comes to start, how 
when it, when it comes to the topic, like, how would you, do you have like a, maybe a step-by-step -step process or things that you explain to people when they have this question, like, how do I start? Where do I start when I want to grow a heart-centered business? Yeah, br brilliant question. And this, this is where, when people start a business, this is where one of the biggest um, obstacles come up. Now, is obviously, you know, we're talking about heart, we're talking about passion. Um, you know, you've got to have the right mindset, but you have got to be able to market, you have got to be able to sell. Now, one of the biggest challenges that I see new business owners having is not understanding the pain and the problem that they're solving. So if we just get technical for a moment. In business, the only reason anybody is going to give you their hard earned money that they've been in their own job, they've been working away for the only reason they're ever going to give you their money, if you solve a pain or a problem for them that they value solving. If you think that anything that you've handed money over for you any product or service you bought, you bought it because it solved a pain, it solved a problem. And new business owners go into the business, and they don't understand what that pain or problem is. And you've got to think, what is it that's keeping people up at night? What is it that's keeping people awake? Now, if you can find something that you're passionate about, something that you love and you know you can help people with, but it's also keeping other people awake at night, then that, I mean, that is a fantastic start. That's a fantastic start. Now, I just, um, you know, from my own experience, the best way to start, so for me, I had my own coaching business, you could do this with with any product or service you have go and find a friend go and find a customer um work with them do it for free do it for free if you've never done anything like that before do it for free get a testimonial from them at the end and then you can go back out to the marketplace with a testimonial showing that you can actually help people and then what you do actually works and this is this is such a fantastic place to start and every you know there's a lot to business. You've got to, the marketing, the sales, finance, admin, taxes. Don't worry about that. That will come. As you go through your steps, as you go through your years, you'll, you'll, get, you'll get to grips with that. You'll understand it. But at the begin very beginning, just focus on finding somebody that you can help, somebody that you can serve. It's going to help them. They're going to talk about you. They're going to write a testimonial about you. But it's also going to give you experience. You're going to feel uh, you're going to feel more credible. You're going to feel more confidence in what it is that you can deliver. But it always comes back down to what is the pain? What is the problem that you're solving? And you need to go deep on that. A lot of people stay very surface level. If you, if I give the example, if there's a um, if there's a kid that's running in the street, he's out playing in the streets and falls over, grazes his knee. Um, he's cut his knee open, so he, he's bleeding. He's, that kid isn't thinking about what bandage he wants to buy, um, what plaster or band-aid he wants to buy. That kid is purely just thinking about stopping the pain. He just wants somebody to stop the pain. That's all he wants. And you gotta think in the same manner in business. You know, the customer isn't thinking about, you know, what, what the plaster or the band-aid is. They're just, they want you to stop that pain or problem. That's all they're thinking about. So if you can get in those terms, you're going you're gonna to be able to get off to a much faster start, definitely. Yes, thank you so much for sharing that. So I, I feel um, you point out the most important thing there is really to make the start. Just start by doing it for free help someone, get them results, and, and have a testimonial after doing that. So I just repeat it for one sec for people listening later. But, you know, you point out something really important that, there, that when, you, when you really dare to go deep on that and really see and maybe even feel or <laughs> re-experience some of the pains that you've been on your own start in your journey or on your own journey, points that you've been through deep pain yourself when when you're willing and able to uh to embrace that on a deep level i i, I totally uh, agree with you when when you're able to do that and really you know some us human beings and most of us creatives and entrepreneurial souls um we love to after we've been through some hurdles we'd love to just move on look forward and you know not not looking back too much because it has been painful and you're so glad glad that you came through that um so that's what i often see with our clients as well that um you know they they sometimes move past 
the foundation or or the the where the treasures can be found for a strong foundation they move past it pretty quickly but when you dare to dig deep on that you can find more treasures for the long run to to build a foundation where you can really help these people if you're daring to to feel that pain again just to understand them and to do that from a place of service that's kind of how i experience what you just said do, does this make sense yeah totally i've always loved the i've always loved the phrase your mess becomes your message and sometimes we go through painful experiences and then we get through it and we think right never want to deal with that again thank god that's over um and we kind yeah. of lock the box done with it um never speak of it ever again but what what actually happens you know if you if you go back into that if you get it handled you actually work out how how did you get through that how mm -hmm. did you that pain how did you um how did you manage to get through to the other side because there are people yeah going through that experience right now who need your inspiration, your guidance to help them navigate through those challenging times. And they're going to connect with you so much more because you've been through it yourself. And so they feel that empathy from you. They feel that connection from you because they know you've been through the very same thing and they feel understood. Yes. Yes, I love that. And that's where you, you know, now maybe hopping on to, to another question when it comes to what to do, how to start and where to start when you want to grow your heart center business. Um, like you just shared, you know, sales and, and um, all these extra things make so much sense, but you'll learn them along the way, right? It's, it's important that you start here on, on, on the, yeah, on the very beginning when, uh, or with, really uh, getting clear on what the pain is that people go through and, and how you can help them and what problem you can solve for them. So when it comes to that, um, when it comes to the next step and being, you know, becoming good in sales and understanding them, um, it, it, I see that as being something, you know, what I teach is, I, I call it soulful sales, you know, be, do that from the heart and really connect. And, you know, when it comes to a heart centered business, this is kind of, what I feel there as well. Um, and yeah, could you maybe take us with you a bit on, on how you did that on your journey, how you, um, how you connect with your clients and, and, you know, help them feel seen, safe and secure to make, to, to, to buy your, your courses or your programs or anything that you offer. Yeah. Fa fantastic question. And I'll just say in the beginning, I was, terrible at sales there was there was nothing more I, I was scared of it i felt uncomfortable around it i'd never learned anything about it i'd never had to do um do any of that before in my life um mm -hmm. and it was horrible for me it was horrible like i just i was really scared about it but it's really understanding again i did some work on it what does sales actually mean what is selling and mm -hmm. somebody a salesperson somebody who's selling products and services is somebody who has high integrity they're trustworthy, they're honest, they're open, and they want to do the greatest good for the greatest number of people. And many people shy away from selling, and you've actually got to think, you, you are doing the greatest good for the greatest number of people when you are selling. You are helping to change somebody's life. Um, now, for me, people have different styles in selling. Um, you know, there are some, you know, I, I know you know uh, Blair Singer, he, he wrote a whole book about it, these different sales personalities. Um, and, uh, you know, some people are that very kind of pit bull approach. They're very just direct to the point. Let's get to it. That's OK. That's awesome. That, that's a style that works. Um, you've also got, you know, like your poodle, somebody who likes to network a lot. Um, I for me, I was very much that kind of person that wants to build a really long term relationship, wants to just over deliver, uh, wants to build that friendship, wants to make sure they're always taken care of. And I, th I think for me, I, that's something that's massively helped me i want to feel like my clients have a friend and mm. they've got somebody who they can turn to if they're stuck you know i'm i'm helping my clients with with business but there's so much outside of their business that goes on um and i'm helping them with that as well it's because we have all these personal challenges that come into our life and they inevitably affect business and i do want my clients to feel like they've got a friend um they've got somebody that cares about them 
But as a coach, somebody who's going to push them, somebody who's going to pull them, and at times somebody who's just going to put their arm around them and tell them, it's okay, we've got this, let's do this together. Um, <laughs> you know, I do, I, do give my, I do give my clients tough love, but, you know, tough love is still love. Uh, I love my clients and I just, I want to see them get the very best results. I love that. Yes. And I, I really, I think I connect with you on, on the types of sales that just come naturally. It's really so helpful to, to figure that out for yourself. Um, you know, what is your, what is your natural style? How do you like to connect and how do you build trust with people? Um, and how do you build these relationships? Because, um, I think this is what will help you when you start your own start uh, uh, heart-centered business. Um, it really can help you um, connect with your clients, and like you just said, like you do, Tom. You know, be you know, go through all these things with them together. Have them feel that they're not alone on this. And every you know, all of us have our own style, um, but I can really. Now say I, I had to do some own inner work on that too to really open my heart and really um, yeah dare to to connect even deeper sometimes because when it comes to sales you know it can be so scary for people like just like you said when people are willing to um, to share their hard earned money with you um, it is it is so for me as I've learned these past years like it is so important to to walk that path together and help them, you know, help them feel safe and seen and understood in that and understand maybe their ways of how to deal with money as well, because it can be such a scary jump to jump in and buy something with you or from you. Right. So it can be so helpful to take them by the hand and just do that together. Um, and that's why, that's why it comes back down to the pain and problem because yeah you're trying to solve a pain and problem, which isn't really that painful. Um, and people, it's not actually that big of a problem. People aren't going to want to, people aren't going to want to hand over their money. Um, I, I'll give you, I'll give you a prime example. So I, when I had my car, I drove into my neighbor's wall and I was reversing out of the driveway. I drove into the wall and scraped the back of the car and it created this big scratch down the, um, down the uh, backside by the wheel. Now, did I go and did I go and get it repaired? What every time I looked at it, it was a problem. Like it was like, oh man, I can't believe I've done that. And it was like that. Oh, I kind of the car doesn't look so nice now. Was yeah. it possible enough for me to then go and spend however much money to get it repaired? No, it was just it was just a, it was just a scratch down the back. It was a scrape down the back. Um, and many people are trying to solve the scrape down the back of the car rather than the real mm -hmm. rather than the real issue. Mm -hmm. So if the problem and the pain and problem you're not you're solving isn't painful enough, you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna meet a lot of resistance. You think about some excruciating back back pain, like they can't move, they're stuck in bed, stuck on the sofa. They don't they don't care how much the solution costs. They just yeah whatever. How much is it? Okay, give it to me. I need it um, because they want to be out of that pain. As a, as a new business owner, as a, any business owner, you've got to think in those terms. Yes, I love that. I uh, I love your private example. <laughs> I can imagine that that was a bit of a painful situation, uh, but not too painful to make a change. Um, it just brings up some memories where I, I see um, a family member also scratching a car or me hitting a car one day. So... Thank you for sharing that. It opens up all new conversations, probably for some other other time. <laughs> but um, I just, I, I'm just checking in because we're we're almost, you know, one hour gone. It, it just just went like that. So I'm just grateful for, you know, sharing all your your wisdom and and some of your personal experiences. I'm I'm really grateful for you doing that. And um, I feel like asking you or giving you some space. Uh, you know, to round today's um, session off. Uh, is there anything before we dive into where can people can find you? Is there anything that you feel we might not have covered yet or, or some, you know, slogan or say or, or tips, tools, tricks that you feel would be helpful for people listening or watching? 
Yeah, I think I think it comes back. The the thought that came into my head there was, um, you know, we were talking about the word courage earlier, and just have courage. And courage doesn't mean you're um, you're eliminating the fear. It just means you're going. Do you know what? I'm scared, but I'm going to do it anyway. Um, so that, I'd, I'd absolutely absolutely share that as kind of final thought with people. Um, you know, if anybody wanted to connect with anyone, anyone's thinking about starting a business or just started a business and they're, they're struggling to get it going, um, I'll happily have a conversation. If, if, you know, you feel like I'm the person that can help you with that, amazing. Um, if I'm not, then I'll just do whatever it takes to point you in the right direction. Um, but absolutely, I just invite people if they need help with growing the business, growing their new business and getting started. Um, absolutely just send, send me a message on, on Instagram or Facebook and they're the main places that you're going to find me. Um, so yeah, excellent. And just thank you so much for having me here today. And I've got, like you say, it's, it goes very, very quickly. It goes very, very quickly. Um, and that's why I love these. Yeah. Thank you so much, Tom. And, and just, just to help people, you know, uh, of course we'll share uh, where people can find you in the, in the show notes and, and any, anything um, that we share online. But could you maybe uh, tell us, like, really spell uh, the um, Instagram account or Facebook account or maybe email where people can find you? Yeah, so, um, my, so my Instagram handle is Tom W.J. Cook. It's Cook with a knee on the end. Um, you can also email my office, so it's Tom at Tom W.J. Cook, again with a knee on the end, dot com. Um, so that's best Great. Thank you so much for sharing that. And uh, I know that your website is, is being built, so that will be pointed at, well, put into this world soon. Um, maybe we can add that to the show notes as well um, when it's ready. And um, I just want to say thank you, everybody, for, for listening in, for um, watching today or watching this back any other day. Uh, I'm grateful for all of you living your purpose or trying to figure out what yours is and, you know, on the journey to gather all the information. Um, I hope that this has been helpful for you and I'm just grateful for, you, for sharing your time. And uh, if you feel like asking us anything uh, or sharing any of your stories, you know where to find us. Uh, you know where to find Tom now. And you can find us on our social media as well, uh, or go to uh, www.soulfulbusinesscreation.com and um, you can uh, join me there or just join me on the podcasts and any other of the social media. So I'm just grateful for you being here and being here again. Um, thank you, Tom. It has been such a pleasure and amazing connection. Uh, I, I'm looking forward to meeting you soon again. And... Uh, Grateful for everybody listening. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye.